my name is Adam and this is a minimization talk. And so I was minimizing my system and I minimized it so much that there were no fonts left, so everything is handwritten on the slides. Um, so one of the points, points I want to make here is that smaller might not necessarily mean better. So if you minimize the system, th there are no fonts left. Is it better or is it worse? I don't think it's better. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. But let's just start with the problem. So what's the problem with, with like I'm trying to solve? So the problem is that things are getting bigger. And that means that some container images are getting bigger. And some applications or runtimes and their dependencies are also getting bigger. Um, and that's just a fact that we have. Um, and why is it a problem? So there are like four things I've identified, maintenance footprint. So if there are like more things, you need to maintain more things, right? Um, the attack vector is also a thing because if there are many dependencies on your system, um, there may be more vulnerabilities. Um, it's less flexible because things can overlap. And what I learned just today that some IoT devices that have very low bandwidth connection, getting updates there might take time. So minimizing is also relevant in that use case a lot. But as I said, bigger is not necessarily always bad. Um, and I have some examples here. So like, on the left, I have small base image, which is like a maybe container image and some applications on it. And on the right, I have bigger base image and smaller applications. And if you have bigger base image, and if you have that in the cloud and on a bigger scale, the base image will share things with, for all the images. So like the total size will be smaller. So bigger is not necessarily better in this, in this example. Um, but on the other hand, if I have a smaller base, there's less things. So it's more flexible because whatever I put on this, it, could work because I can drag basically anything. But in the other one, I would have to replace packages. And so it's not always the case. Um, if I have something like this, if I have like the base and the applications and there's some space in the middle, um, what to do? Like, so at the bottom, right? That there's pieces like everyone wants, glibc, for example. In the middle, there might be things that someone wants and then like well, just the application. And I could just make a cut somewhere, but that's not really a minimization. Like that's not optimizing anything. Um, that's a very different conversation, a very different decision, and that's basically something I don't want to really, really solve. So, about smaller images, um, I this effort will be enabling building smaller images by optimizing, um, by making things smaller. It will be informing decisions to make smaller images. We can say. This package, for example, is very popular, but this other one is not. But we won't be defining smaller images. So images are not really focused here. So, so what's the focus? What's the goal? So the goal is really to optimize use cases. And by use cases, I mean applications and runtime deployed in certain contexts. So like web server in a container or something. Whatever is useful, and we can then focus and try to make it, try to minimize but keep it useful. Um, so we can look at multiple things like dependencies, features, or alternatives, and I'll just demonstrate what, that's, what all of that is. So if I have an application, and there's a lot of dependencies, right? And I, it can happen that something was just dragged in by mistake, or maybe there was something forgotten and just dragged too many things, so I can just cut it in half, and maybe it'll continue working. So that's like the easiest thing that we can do. And I'm sure there will be some of these, some of these existing. Um, what we can also do is that I have an application and maybe for my use case, I don't need all the features of the application. So I can just cut a piece of the application out and it might minimize things. That's an approach as well. Or, and this is what's, what might be happening a lot is that if I need certain functionality, there might be a different provider of the same functionality in the repos. So I might be able to cut like those, I don't know, 17 packages and replace it with other two. Um, that might happen as well. And with all of these data, we might be able to look at things in bigger context. So I can have a look at multiple, multiple applications or use cases and see, make some statistics. So um, 
what's, what's in the base, what, what could be in the base, and I can use that, to, I, I can use this data to give it to the people who actually care about containers or actually will be doing smaller images. So like, I can minimize things and get some data from it. Um, so before this objective started, um, there were already people doing minimization things, and how we can we help them? So, because this is nothing new, like there are already people doing this, so how can we help and how can we make it on maybe on a bigger scale or with bigger impact? So, first thing is making smaller versus keeping smaller. And I think we need to do a bit of a both, but just like doing there and minimizing things and hoping they will stay small, that won't happen. So we need to have some kind of balance between these two. Um, the same with doing versus automating. I can do something or I can automate whatever is possible. Again, I can't just automate. I need to be doing something first so I know what to automate. So, but, but tools and automation will be one of the focus here, and that's the new thing. Um, and I have something about graphs, so these are like dependency graphs. So we can look at the repos and see all the dependency relations in a, in a federal repo, for example. Or I can have a look at a specific installation, a specific use case. So let's have a look at both. So this is the federal repos. Um, it took three hours to generate. It's a 130 megabytes SVG file with 1.6 million lines. Um, it took me like five minutes to load in a browser. And this is not good for humans and not good for computers. This is like really hard to process and really hard to work with. So I don't think this will be the, it, it, it's nice to look at, it's interesting, but I don't think it's useful. So that's what, not what we're gonna do. So, Let's have a look at the installations instead, and maybe we can consume information from the repos later. And where I have a demo, um, I managed to prototype a tool that can visualize some dependencies. Um, it's an early prototype, but it might be useful even now, and we can extend it with things. So this is a demo. Um, so I'm opening a terminal, and the tool is um, just called Show Me and I can do the help. And basically what you need to do is show me what, how, and where. Um, so let's have a look at the Fedora base image, container base image. So I just say, Fed, uh, show me Fedora 30 graph. And I say where. That'll be an SVG file. And it just processes things. And there we go. And I can open the SVG file in a Firefox, for example. And this is it, this is the Fedora 30 base image. Um, it's not ideal, but it's much more readable, right? And we can see glibc in the middle. Um, so what I can do is I can click on any of the nodes and see the relations between the packages. And I have like red arrows, that means that, and I can read the package from here. But um, the RPM build libs requires a lot of packages and it's required by one. And what I can use it to is just to do a quick inspection of like what's going on. So if I want to trace down the package, um, the RPM build lives, so I can follow the blue line and it's just required by Python 3 RPM, which yes, again, just one line. Required by Python 3 DNF, I click on that, again, one line, it's like it's been chosen for a demo. Required by DNF and so on. And this can give me like a very quick overview why something is, is in the installation. Zoom out. So, yeah, this is just a simple view of, of the dependencies. I can click on glibc because everyone wants to see it. I think everything on this screen requires glibc except one package somewhere there. Um, all right, so, so that was a view on, on, a, on a specific image. But again, that was just too many things and maybe not useful like for for looking at it. So let's have a look at HTTPD on top of the base image. So first of all, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm build, I'll build an HTTPD container. 
So I'll just say that I want to use the 30 bit Raspberry base image. I only install HTTPD and let's see what happens. All right, I'll build a container. And there we go. And I can just use the same command. Actually, no, I won't use the exact same command. I will use this specific option, and I will say that I want to define package group, and I want to merge the whole base image into a single node that gives me a, bit, a little bit better view. So I can do show me HTTPD F30 graph. And I'll define the group. I call it Fedora 30 base image. And it's from the container at Fedora 30. OK. Again, it generates an SVG file. I can open it with a Firefox. And there we go. This is much simpler view. And if I click on the Fedora base image, I can see much simpler view. Um, maybe in this simpler view, I don't need like all the clustering in there. And I can have a different one. So let me change that to a directed graph instead of a whole messy thing. So I just change this graph to directed graph. And this will be much better view. Opening a Firefox, and I, I think this is much more readable just to see on like what HTTP looks like on top of the base image. Um, I'm sure some of you can see a bug. There are two packages on the left that are not pulled in by anything. That's because this doesn't show any um, weak dependencies, um, but that would be quite easy to fix, and they're pulled in by the other package. Um, so that's how I can basically visualize this. Um, it can work with other things, not just containers. It can work with uh, paths on your system, even your own system. So what I'm doing here is just I'm installing a package into an empty root, and I'm going to visualize that. And there's one more feature I'm going to show you. Um, that was super fast. Um, editing video is great. Um, all right. So I'll say, show me, and I can just do a path, and it recognizes the path, and shows the path. And there is one new option I'm also using is, is dash dash slide, uh, size. And it, with every package, it just also shows how big it is on the system, which is useful to maybe see like, if there's something big I should maybe focus on. So that's the, it's like little parallel packages again. Um, it looks very similar in glibc. Um, <laughs> all right, so like in this, I haven't minimized anything, but maybe this tooling might be helpful to someone, and probably not to use it in the in in the scenario as I was on image that has been already produced and might take days to to produce. That feedback might not be that useful. But maybe if we run it for uh, in the Fedora CI or as part of the gating or whatever um, in Fedora, we might be able to generate that for builds that we want to focus on. And we might be able to generate these graphs. We might be able to generate um, size changes over time. And if the size goes, if something goes up the threshold, I can just do an alert. And that's how we can maybe monitor and try to keep things smaller over time. Um, but that was just like really abstract. Um, I, I have a roadmap as well. So what's the plan for the future? Um, I have four stages, and the later two are a little bit fuzzy. But the first is discovery. So first, we need to see what's going on and basically do discovery. Um, experiments, that's the next one. And then I have stabilization and integration. We'll, we'll see what's going to happen, because the first will inform the other one, et cetera. So this is a timeline I have. This is the probably most specific timeline right now. 
we're in the discovery phase in August, and what we need to do is to have some sort of more specific plan for the next phase so we can do actually some experiments. But because we shouldn't just get random dependencies, we need to know what to do. That's why discovery first. Um, if anything of this is interested for you, um, you can join the team. You're very welcome to join the team, and a few people already did that. Um, if you're searching for information, you just open the federal documentation. You can click on engineering teams, click on minimization objective, and there's all the info there. There's the actual objective page. Um, there's an action plan for most of the discovery phase, or like a short action plan. We have four focus areas that you can read about. There's a team. Um, already 10 people in the team interested in doing things about, much, uh, about minimization. And there's also a link at the tool, in the tool section. And this space will be basically growing and having more information as we go. Um, and there are some links. Um, writing is right, so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so that's the documentation. We chat on the Federal Devel, and this is our issue tracker. And if you have any questions, Um, if there's a space for policy change in Fedora, definitely yes. Um, there's already a lot of policy about making about making minimal things, and it's more might be more about enforcing. But I haven't seen all the policy, and there's definitely space. It's not just yeah cutting things off, but making sure that it's um, it stays like that over time. So policy is definitely in scope. Um, yeah. If it's runtime or build time, primarily runtime because that's what matters for the installations. But yeah, basically that's the primary focus, runtime. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if there's a foc if there's a focus on uh Sub packages as well. Yeah, so on the graph, these were binary packages from Fedora, so these were basically the sub packages. Um, I think what you mean is if you have in Fedora source RPM package, it has multiple, it can have potentially multiple binary packages in there, and that's what the graph shows. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so maybe if there are like multiple options, the tool could suggest alternatives, and that's definitely the plan that could do that, like yeah. That's why I want to focus primarily on installation, so the initial graph is much smaller than the repo that was basically unreadable, right? But it can consume the repo data and show you alternatives, like yeah, hey, this package drags in this, but like there are five other options and you can instantly see the impact. It's definitely not implemented, but it's something that you would be interested in helping. I would be very happy to have you on board. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think that would be very useful. Yeah? yeah? So do you have some solution uh, for the usefulness of the application? So if you say you want to cut some functionality of the application to make it more minimal, but both, uh, some people obviously want minimal system, and some people want the best features, the best things available. Do you have some solution? Yeah, so I, I said I want to, the question was that I said I want to cut features, but that's in conflict. Some people want small, some people want all the features, so what to do with that? Um, that's what I want to focus on use cases and not necessarily packages or not necessarily all the, all the ecosystem. And it'll depend case by case, but we definitely, like, if, if, there, if, if we discover that, for example, and I'm just making this up, we have two use cases for HTTPD, one full feature and one very small, we can build two versions of H two variants of HTTPD with different feature sets, like but that's not a problem, I guess. So yeah, that would be the that would be the that, that would be the option. I, I don't know if that happens ever, but yeah, that that basically would be the solution there. Um, Oh, okay. Um, 
So the, the question was if, if we get to the point that we have alternative variants of packages with different features, if we can have an install image with those, maybe, yeah, like giving them options. Yes, probably, but that would be very, very later, right? Yeah. The, we first need to make it happen, so we first need to discover like what's, what the focus would be, then actually minimize it and produce it, and then in the end, yeah, maybe make the installation easier by giving people better interface, but that would be very, very later. But yeah, yeah, could be, could be. Not now, not this year probably, but like could be. Mm -hmm. The problem with this is actually if you put in the container or or it's your single, if you put those in the container, you cannot switch to the full version and no window which doesn't involve some DNS extra. Mm -hmm. So the yeah, that was mostly remarked that we have some like curl or curl minimal. Um and there's a primary problem that if you install one into a Docker image you can't uh to a container image you can't easily switch to the other one. Um I don't think that's problem that much like if, if you can achieve that state that's fine and if there is a use case for switching from one to another maybe we can work on that right but I, I think for, first we'll be enabling this and I'm happy that there are already cases like that but yeah we still need to do the minimization work first and then I think worry about switching from variants and things like that but if it's a use case it's a use case yeah it'll be it'll happen Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it was about, um, yeah. We have container image, federal based image that has a certain size, that has full featured package. If we switch the full featured package to something limited, it'll be smaller, but some people couldn't be able to use it. And this is exactly what I wanna, don't wanna focus on container images. It's a very different job than this. Uh, I want this to be focused on actual minimization of those use cases, and then deciding what's in the base image and what's not, that's a very different, um, thing and we have a container second federa for that. But yeah, we can give them data. Like I can see I had uh, I had the screen with like multiple apps and like what's the what's the intersection in there? Like what's the overlap? And we can say, hey this package is used by almost everything, so you should have it in the base image. This one isn't, so you might not be there, but it's up to you to actually decide. And who knows? Like you might have multiple base images in Fedora anyway, right? You can have very small one for Rust applications because you don't need almost anything. You can have a big full feature one for other deployments. I don't know, um, but I, I guess that's the container. So, yeah. Any other questions, ideas, ideas, comments? All right. Thanks for coming and enjoy the boat. <laughs> <laughs>